coming forward. Ah. Oh. Welcome. It is a pleasure to be here. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Barry. You are Max, right? Yes, hello, yes. Yes, yes. I just wanted to talk to you. I connected to you yesterday, so I was uh, wanted to um, to chat with you a little bit. How, yes, what, what's new? Energy yesterday, yes. Uh huh. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, a few days ago, I sort of had the revelations, but uh, right now I, I I just kind of I'm blanking on it. I can't come back to it anymore. But I remember how I was coming to you. There was the idea, I, I was speaking to my friend and um, she predicted that there will be lots of uh, war and violence just based on very uh, material, materialistic uh, analysis of the situation. She sees that um, dominant figures uh, come into the, to power and uh, they will be grabbing for, uh, for more control and more power. They will be like... Uh, a conflict, um, very physical conflict, uh, using armies, physical armies and people. And um, I was uh, trying to co combine that with my idea of um, enlightenment and uh, upliftment and uh, peace and love. And, and basically I realized that possibly there will be some sort of a splitting of timelines and splitting and parallel existence of of uh, light workers and dark workers, or let's say light workers and materialistic, um, uh, materialistic people, and will coexist in the same reality, but at the same time will be separated. That's as much as I remember. Can you comment on uh, on any of that? Yes, in every day and age, you will know that there are wars and rumors of wars always, and so what she says is true of every age. The difference with this age is she sees that there is much more action toward war being taken, but that does not mean that it will break out this moment. The, the thought process is that there is ascension going on and there's positivity moving forth. And as the light gets lighter, the dark gets darker. And so there will be turmoil in places that there was none before. And there will be turmoil in places that have always been tumultuous. But this prediction of hers is rather common all over the world. Not, there is no one that does not hear these rumors of war and see the actions that are being taken by the leaders of your planet. But Keep that positive thought process going. Um, you basically, elevate well, your everybody's thought process around you by being the example of love, peace, and humility. Right. Uh, basically, one of your arguments was actually it was pretty meek, uh, esoteric argument that. The generation of children which were born in uh, uh, between 2000 and 2010, so basically in the uh, tens, you know, it's 2000s. Uh, uh, this generation is uh, uh, prepared for war. They are very strong-willed, very quick-minded, and very, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, ready for the conflict. The, yes. the, now, it so, is very true. Let me tell you, you are looking at the video games that your son plays, and the video games that are out there are all about war. They are all about conflict. These are preparations for something of the future. They will have these conflicts, and they will know how to fight these battles because of the strategic information that they're learning. Uh-huh. So, um, uh, I guess it comes to um, the idea that it is the same creator 
multiplying itself into billions of people and uh, fighting itself on certain level. I mean, from certain perspective, it is all, all is all an illusion and it is the same soul pretending to fight. So, so what I'm saying is um, when the millions of people are lost in, in uh, are killed in wars, is it really that they're killed or, or is it all an illusion? Maybe. So if the population of Earth goes from six, seven billion to, say, to a much smaller amount, number of people, is it really that it is all real or is it all imaginary? Maybe we are imagining it. Maybe there is much, much fewer players which pretend to be dying, but in fact they don't. Remember this. F there is no such thing as real death unless you disconnect yourself from God completely. The only real death is disconnecting from God completely and turning to the uh, evil or negative sources. So as these people disappear from your world, that does not mean they are disappearing from eternity. They are still there. They are still uh, manifesting in other places and coming uh, and their purpose here is done. So do not worry about uh, them dying because it is not the case. Their energy lives on, it moves forward, it's doing something more productive. Um, I got it. But is it really that we have like 7 billion souls here or is it an illusion? There are more than 7 billion souls here, yes. So they are real? They are real, yes. Because there is a rumor, I guess, some, some of the teachers say that, in fact, we have much fewer souls pretending to be 7 billion. Maybe only every other body has a soul and everything, everybody ah. else is just, just a hologram. That is a dangerous thought process because that makes life less important. That makes life less meaningful. If, if they do not believe that there are souls in every person, then they can exterminate people and not feel any guilt. They can uh, bring about mass destruction and say, ah, but they were not real anyway. So this is a dangerous thought process. And they are trying to put this into the masses so that they may harm one another and not feel any guilt. Okay. So I'm, uh, it's, it's funny, I had that revelation and now I don't remember it, but for me it was resolved at some point that uh, the new humanity is, uh, is just being created right now. And um, yes, and uh, this uh, violence might even uh, help us in a way to, to, to uplift ourselves. You are absolutely correct. Let, let, let me explain. With, with the bringing about of this kind of violence and, uh, and making the whole earth the plane of for this violence, you will have many that will have to awaken. You will have many that will have to change their thought processes about what this world is all about. And they will have to choose good or evil. They will have to choose which direction that they are going. And many of these people that are asleep will decide to wake up and find good as the answer and be on the side of right, whereas they were just in third dimension, not giving really much of, a, of their uh, life to good or evil but they are, were just moving along, floating along in a neutral state. But now they will have to decide to move in a positive direction so that things will be greater and better in the future. These negative wars and rumors of wars and outbreaks of violence often 
are eye-opening for the peoples around them. And that is the meaning, and that is one of the reasons why these things happen, so that people can be enlightened, and they can know that they are up against negativity, and they must choose a side. Um, you know, I'm standing before a choice, and I guess many others, how much to pay attention to what is happening in, uh, in, in, in terms of violence and, um, and uh, if, if conflict, physical conflict. Choice, if you already are awake and you are already enlightened, why should you pay attention to the negative? You already know how to move forward in the positive and how to escape negativity and destroy it if necessary. Those that are awakening are the ones that have to deal with which way to turn. And as you know that you are a positive force and are on the side of good, then you do not have to pay much attention to the negativity because you will be prepared when it comes knocking. Mm -hmm. So, so why I'm, I'm give getting it any credence. Why give it any of? Why give it any of your energy? You mm -hmm. must put your energies in the positive. You must put your energies in the places where they are needed. They are not needed at looking at the negative and trying to understand it because you never will. Mm -hmm. will but listen to Baba, and he will tell you that. The positivity is to be pushed forward, to be made example of, to create new great and greater positivities in the future and, and ignore the violence, the negativity in some respects because that's what it wants, attention. You do not want to give attention to a bad child. You want to give attention to their good behavior. So therefore, pay attention to what good is happening. The negativity will always be there and you will always have to fight it when it comes into your path. But until it does, you must concentrate on building your strength in more and more positive ways. Wonderful, uh huh? I'm, uh, I'm playing the image of surfing recently because surf, I'm, I'm going to the ocean and I see surfers and, um, and somehow it influences me in a way that I, I find that the whole life is surfing. Basically, there is a wave and you have to ride the wave and uh, uh, you always, uh, often fail. You often get under the water upside down, but then you again get on the wave and surf again. And um, from a from biological point of view, it's also there is a lot of energy going through the physical energy going through the physical body and meeting the spiritual etheric energy which goes or like prana energy which goes through the same body and meet it uh, on a level of uh, on many levels. But basically, it meets and uh, it is a way of surfing both uh, etheric wave and the physical wave. It's like a flame or flame is also a surfing process because there is a uh, like flame of the candle. There is the um, chemicals going and, and they've been and they burn and, and the flame actually surfs the, the flow of the chemicals. Yes. So, so I'm thinking about uh, surfing the, the muddy waters of, uh, of the violent times and kind of uh, being still alive and, and doing things. And not paying attention to what is around, just being on the on the on the top of the wave. It it is true. It takes a certain talent to live life successfully. There will always be those challenges. But just like with the surfers, a challenge or a, a fall will make you better for the next time. You will learn something from it and rise up and be better at the next ride. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But it Thank is you. always unpredicted. You could be riding the best of the waves and doing your very best and seeing that everything is good, 
still have a fall, but you know it is there to make you better, not worse. Uh huh. Yeah. One one of the worries which uh, <laughs> which um, comes into my calculations uh, is that once I I was talking about us. Uh, ascending and then uh, some some of the beings corrected me it, it wouldn't be us it would be them it would be the future generations that, that will be ascending and we are still possibly will we will not make it so um oh do not look at it that way no you must see that if you pass on from this life and have not ascended that when you come back here you will end up in the ascended place. Uh -huh. There is no problem with that. You will, will know the ascension one way or the other. It will not be that it passes you by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So only do not look at it this way. You have, you have your job to do at this lifetime, whether you ascend or not. Is not important unless God thinks it is. And then if God thinks it's important for you to ascend, then you will. But there is much work in, in ascending from this realm to that. And this population is not ready for it yet. Uh-huh. Um, do you see the, the, the ascended world? How does it look? What did you say? Do you see the ascended world, the ascended humanity? How does it look? The, well, it's, it's an interesting point of view because there are some that are ready to, to translate into another uh, element, another dimension, but mostly there is those that are not. And so you have everyone in different states of readiness for a translation into the next uh, dimension. However, my thought is this. Many do not even realize that there is something of this nature even coming. And they are unaware that their life will be changed by it in the future. So they have to look at their lives differently to make this translation. Now, in this lifetime, I do not think there will be many that will have the, the, the right thought process and the right uh, work ethic and meditation uh, paralysis or, or prowess to move forward that way. But I see that... All of your mind is starting to observe a way to possibly do this. They're starting to come into awareness that it can happen. Now, you must not give up your life waiting for it because that is a waste. Always keep working toward it. Those that are finished with their journeys may stop and wait for it. But those that have missions and are ready to complete them have got to move forward and complete the work that needs done for the ascension and not worry about turning into light. Only those that are finished with their work and finished with their missions should be work thinking about these things. <laughs> but um, I just wonder, are you free to go in the future and see the future humanity? Are you uh, capable of just going from, from your place where you are to the place where the humanity is already ascended and just see? Yes, of course. How does it look? Um, what do you it see? It is a beautiful place. It is not perfect. But it is beautiful and it has its greater understandings, its greater illuminations. Now, saying that, it also has 
its dark sides as well, because of the yin and the yang of the universe, you must understand that there is always going to be those forces pulling one from another and showing one another what true light is for and what true darkness is to be left behind because of. Mm -hmm. How much is uh, carried over from here to there? Like, do they still have Hindus there? Do they have races? Do they have uh, scientists and things of that sort? Of course they do. Uh-huh. It just will <laughs> be a different outlook. And science is a wee bit different there. So it's, um, it is a change in thought process. And remember, when you're in a different dimension, science changes. Uh huh. And so you might be a, a scientist in this dimension here and then go there and think that science is not for you any longer, but something else might take a precedence. And this is also what God loves about this, is he made you uh, a creative being. He put all kinds of things within you in different um, amounts and perspectives and in one life you may be great and in another you might be a learning these are different ways that God works with each human and with each being that they come through life learning about what has happened to them in my lifetime he has g gave me many gifts to see who people were and why they were doing the things that they were doing because he saw that I needed to help them with their perspective on what they needed to be doing and how they needed to change. And those that came to me and were listening to me were those that were sent by God because they needed to hear something very resolute about their life and very resolute about where they were going and why they were going there. Now, it may not have seemed by what I said that that was the case, but if you understand who each individual was, then you will understand that each individual message and each individual um, time that I spoke to someone would bring about a different change than in the next but they would all head toward a positive direction. Uh -huh. Can you help me with, uh, uh, that is a funny question. So I, I, um, I made a mistake, uh, uh, a calculation mistake. And uh, I estimated the volume of work for the certain actor uh, to be double what I, what I actually need. I thought that uh, the book will be like 70 hours of, uh, of narration and talking and, uh, and it came out only to nine hours. So I, I promised him more work. So I decided that I will um, have him narrate my book number one, which, is, uh, which was written uh, seven years ago. And when I started moving in that, in that direction, I got lots of resistance. The computer refused to work and... Um, things just didn't go right. Like there was a lot of interference. And I'm listening to that book now and um, basically I'm reading the book and I find that I said a few harsh words about some extraterrestrials and, and some of the gods. I said that ancient gods were actually evil extraterrestrials were not real gods. Um, so I'm still moving in that direction. I, I will kind of write a commentary on the book and uh, correct some of the points, but would you think that uh, republishing and narrating the book would be a good idea, or is it really not, not what I should be doing? It is what you should be doing. Let me tell you why. Uh -huh. You see, it is not an accident that you're going back to this first book and doing some corrections and having it read, because you are going to find that the corrections are going to make the book much better, and that when they when finally people are going to be reading it, that they're going to hear the truth. 
it, the reason why there was so much things put in your way is that they did not want you to go back and do this because they wanted it to stay negative. They wanted it to stay a little bit in the darkness so that people would pick up on that negativity. But now that you are going back and re, re visualizing it in a small way, you are correcting the negative errors that are there. And that is why negativity came to, across your path, so that you would not go back, so that you would not correct, so that you would not make right. So this is why there was some difficulty. But now you are seeing that a part of you is seeing this is the right thing to do. This is, this is something that actually is a very good thing. But an, uh, the other part of you is warring with that, those negativities that came into your pathway and saying, oh, no, you don't have to do that. But go back, make right, bring it into the positive realm, change the harsh words if you, if you have to. But if it's true, if things are true, make them, keep them true. Just say it in a way that is not so harsh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wonderful. Thank you. That's that agrees with what I'm I was intending to do. Uh-huh. Yes. I think that I think I think it's a wonderful thing that you go back because I think when you reread it one more time, it will also get better editing. I think that when you read it one more time, it will also be smoother when when it is read because you will not have him re read a a, a very unstable book, but you will have him read into a beauty and a smoothness that you want everyone to hear it properly. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh huh. Right. And so, this is a great opportunity for you to make the first book even better. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, I think I would uh, invite uh, maybe Plato and maybe Lakesh to speak. Uh, just just uh, for Lakesh, maybe briefly, just to ask him a question. Uh, then I will bring Lakesh first. All right. Much love to you, my friend. Much love to you, my friend, too.